Hi guys, I've um, just found this report um, about Miles Johnson. Um, yeah, there's a guy I know called um, Dave Partridge, fantastic guy. Um, he runs a magazine called Shadows of Your Mind and he tried, he's launched I think last year or two years, I'm not sure. But um, he's a great guy, he actually does his investigation work and he's honest and he tells the truth. And he did an interview with me, I think it was last year, and we did speak about Miles Johnson. Um, since then, he's had a lot of harassment and he's seen the nonsense that I've had to go through and other people go through with this maniac, Miles Johnson. It needs to be stopped. I started off um, exposing him last year. He seems to crawl out of things because he's such a liar. He's the, most, the worst liar I've ever come across or the best, whichever way you look at it. The lies that come out of his mouth, you wouldn't even think of them. But he, he's going around slandering absolutely everybody else of any credibility in the UFO world. So I'm going to read out this article. It's very good and it addresses a lot of the points that I've covered and it concises it into this one report so people will get the gist of what this man has been doing. So I'll just read it out. Um, on a night in Paris during the uh, behemoth that was the Guns and Roses Use Your Illusion World Tour 1991-92, lead singer Axel Rose gave a bit of spiel before the song Double Talk and Jive, which called into question the character of a particular Hollywood celebrity. This was the days. This was before the days of hashtag Me Too and the Harvey Weinstein accusations, and it went something like this. I want to dedicate this next song to a man who likes to play games, a man who lives his life playing games, premeditated games, a man who is so empty that that's all he can do is play fucking games, a man who's a parasite, a man whose lives, his life, a man who lives his life by sucking up other people's life force and their energy, an old man who lives vicariously through other pe through young people and sucks up all their life force because he has none of his own, a man who has had to spend his time fucking around with other people because he doesn't know what to do with his own life, a man who uses you, uses the media, uses everybody just to fulfil his fucking parasitic needs. Why is this relevant? You'll see. What follows, in fact? Verifiable facts against one such person who has chosen to attack me and others in the UK UFO community unscrupulously and spread contemptuous lies. Of course, he'll deny all this, call it a vicious attack or something like that, but that's ingrained in his character. It's his go-to response when the true nature of who this person is revealed. In a sense, he doesn't like the truth about him being common knowledge. As we saw last year in the UFO community, this is a regular theme. Those who don't like the truth about them being known orchestrate coordinated attacks on those releasing that information through subordinates. My name is Dave and I'm the editor, writer, designer of the online magazine Shadows of Your Mind, dedicated to ufology and the paranormal, etc, etc. You may have read it. I started, as a, I started it as a curiosity, a desire to find out what the UFO subject was really about. So with a plan in place, I fired off a few emails, arranged a few interviews and the rest took care of itself. Now, 18 months later, I find myself in the crosshairs of one particular person and his associates. A person who I sent a request to for an interview. Unfortunately, upon transcribing that interview, it was so incoherent and full of unverifiable information and rambling off-topic nonsense. I chose not to run it. Last week, I received an email out of the blue from this person, falsely accusing me of making posts on Facebook about him. Needless to say, I responded, asking him what on earth he was talking about, as I hadn't the slightest inkling what he was getting at. The conversation initially ran thus, and I should point out that nowhere on his emails did it indicate that the email was private and confidential and intended for one recipient only. Miles Johnson, The Basis Project. Gather you are circling sick and vile things about myself again. Karma gets all. I've had them. Myself. I don't know how you come by these delusions. Please enlighten me. MJ. It's called a photoshopped image of a black man holding a pussycat with my face inserted, attributed to a defamation campaign on Facebook, attributing me to an animal abuser, circulated by you. I had never heard anything so laughable and responded that he was pointing his finger at the wrong person, that I had no reason to waste my time making him look as he manages to do that by himself.
making him look bad as he manages to do that by himself. I then suggest that he found out who was really responsible instead of throwing accusations. MJ, it's, it, as it's been reported to me that you are doing it, maybe you better check who is slandering you, mate. I then blithely suggested that he, he clearly wasn't as good an investigative journalist as he claims to be if he's throwing these wild accusations around because I knew nothing of what he was speaking and ask it, asked him for evidence of this photo which was never received. His response was this. This is what I was asking you about. Oh, that is what I was asking you about. But you can't say anything about, about without hate speak. A simple question required a simple answer. Note, at no point was there a question put to me in the, in the opening emails, only accusations. Take your hate speak and hate baggage elsewhere. Suffice to say, since it's you being defamed, sort your own mess out. Note, I don't think questioning his journalistic integrity qualifies as hate speak. Again, I see no question, only accus accus accusatory, accusatory statements and a veiled threat. Sort my own mess out? My mess? I created this mess according to Miles Johnson, a situation I knew nothing about until I was threatened and accused over email late one Friday night after the pubs had closed, and again with hate speak, hate baggage nonsense, which I can assume was directed at me because he thinks I conduct campaigns besmirching his name. I don't, although I do realise the irony in putting this out. However, it is not besmirchment to offer information to others which they may find useful, nor is alerting people to the truth of a person's character is not slander. Everything I've written here is factual and verifiable. And I can back that up 100% as well. I mean, it's the same tactics I got, so and other people have got, so it's not beyond the realms of imagination to assume that he does it to other people as well. It's the same tactics. He then went on to suggest that his assistance and involvement, i.e. responding to an interview request, which was subsequently never published on the grounds already mentioned, was pivotal in your mag. I think he means he, the internationally acclaimed shadows of your mind in my being able to publish that first issue. It's not the first time he suggested his, this over email either, as he's already played that card following an interview in which experiencer Marie Kayali divulged certain information. I admit it's true that I did request an interview, as I did to many, many other people in the UFO community, but in no way was he a special case, despite what he may think otherwise. I have worked in the magazine publishing industry for over 20 years, so I know that what it takes to launch a magazine, although normally magazine teams are at least four bodies strong, not solo projects. His insinuation that I needed assistance from him is laughable and petulant at best. Finally, I responded by saying as such and suggested that he didn't show me this image I was purported and suggested that he didn't, he didn't show me this image I was purported to have created. Uh, his next email should be one of apology. If not, then I deemed our little discourse to be at an end. I still await that apology. So why has this prompted me into writing this? Well, it hadn't until I discovered very recently he had also launched a defamation campaign with the help from some other associates against an honest UK UFO researcher who runs the Facebook page Ufology UK. According to JM at Ufology UK, Miles Johnson has been putting the word about the more well-known names in the UFO community that JM is an untrustworthy, toxic individual. I know this not to be the case as I've dealt with JM on many occasions and found him to be salt of the earth guy who is just interested in the topic and keen to learn from people who know more than him, as we all do. JM, however, has also witnessed to a very unsavoury and uncomfortable situation in a public establishment involving Mars Johnson after the Awakening UFO Conference 2018, which will be expanded on below. But anyway, Mars Johnson, why has he got it out for me? JM and a host of others who call him out and try to alert people as to the true character of the man. If you search on YouTube, you'll find videos from women who call him out and try to warn others. Why is that? I've spoken to some of these women personally and was sickened. 
by some of the allegations. Example, in issue four of Shadows of Your Mind, we ran an interview with Marie Kayali, an experiencer and contactee, whose daughter tragically passed away before her time. She informed me that upon hearing of her loss from Mr. Miles Johnson, who she had been on good terms with at one point, offered his sympathies and reached out to her by sending her images of suicide victims who had gone through something similar. What kind of person sends those kinds of images to a grieving mother? He then subjected Marie Kayali to a seven years of harassment by text, email and social media abuse from himself and through others he directed, which still continues to this day and which resulted in a police investigation last year where Miles was required to stop the harassment and online restraining order, as it were. Yeah, if he, he mentions one word about me again or puts a video or anything, he come, he will be arrested and I'll go for it definitely 100% and he's beaten about the bush by calling me the person who can't be named and I'm watching him and he's going to slip up one of these days and I'll have him and I'm not finished yet with you Johnson this is the beginning <laughs> I haven't even started yet you think the, the, the before was bad I, I've just had a break to get my information together and it's you're you're going to be gone too you know when I ran that interview with Marie, he emailed me to defend himself quite vociferously against her claims that he ran multiple subscription pornography channels through his company Underground Video UK. The problem is though, I had not spoken to Marie about any of that, so it had never appeared in print, yet Miles chose to send me a, a long rambling email about how he was not responsible for any of the material that appeared to be related and that the website responsible was not even his, which is still up for debate. Why send a defensive email about something which was never discussed, let alone printed? Now, I have further information on those porn sites and I'll do a video with them because um, his uh, defence and his denial was ridiculous. Uh, he gave himself away in his excuse. Um, the site that runs the porn sites is running over 400 porn sites. People have looked at the at some of them, the titles, and a lot look underage and some look like snuff movies and he's producing these. And um, they're running from how we can't get out of it. Underground Video Underground UK is also connected to um, Alien Abduction UK, I think. They're both together. So he can't deny one and, and say the other one is his. Ridiculous nonsense. Both his. And he's been found out and I've got them all printed out and I'll be printing that again, circulating that. Right. It is mainly women who come out against Miles Johnson, trying to warn others not to get involved with him. Yet when addressing the allegations, Miles would simply turn around to say, so-and-so is mentally disturbed, so-and-so is part of a mind control, control project, and um, created to discredit my work. Of course. It's as if he thinks that he's that important that a whole slew of mind control participants were created just to stop him releasing material such as space space-based laser beams were responsible for the California wildfires or the Falklands war was a cover so that the UK military could get their hands on alien black goo deposits in the South Atlantic or even Max Spears was taken out by black goo because of what he was about to divulge regarding a military super soldier program. Super soldier programs load up nonsense. Talking of Max Spears, following his death in Poland due to a chemical cocktail of antidepressants, opioids, his death was attributed to taking too many tablets of the Turkish version of Xanax, an anti-anxiety medication. He was also suffering from widespread pneumonia, a pathologist found, and had potentially fatal amounts of oxycodone, an opioid drug, in his system. Source, the independent UK newspaper. Miles tried to convince Max's mother that the brown liquid Max ejected shortly before his death was indeed sentient black goo and that Max had been targeted and assassinated and sent illustrative photos. Um, th there was a documentary made by the BBC about Max's death in which Miles pouted his black goo theory. The Independent made documentary conclusion, however, was more down to earth. Let us now take a look, a little time to consider some of Miles Johnson's acquaintances. acquaintances. Michael Shrimpton, convicted paedophile. He's actually promoting him the other day on his channel a few days ago. James Caswell, convicted for domestic abuse. 
in, currently in prison, 12 years. Peter Paget, convicted of benefit fraud, claims to have worked for GCHQ. They, the judge said he was the biggest fantasy he'd ever come across, and he, he was pathetic. Simon Parks, pending, of which, well, I've said pending, of which there are many rumours, but they'll all come to light very shortly. And Sean David Morton, convicted for tax fraud. Kerry Cassidy, who continually promotes convicted murderer Mark Richards as a secret space programme whistleblower, which will be thoroughly debunked in an upcoming documentary by Kevin Moore. And that's coming along very well. I spoke to Kevin and I'm in contact with him quite a lot. See a pattern, anybody? With the exception of Kerry Cassidy, they're not exactly familiar names at the UFO conference. Not in the US, not even in the UK. In fact, Miles' only speaking appearances are confined mainly to his own promoted events at the back room of a pub in Devizes, Wiltshire, or at Kerry Cassidy's UK get together at a hotel in Watford, which all. With the exception of Kerry Cassidy, they're not exactly familiar names at the UFO conferences. Not in the US, not even in the UK. In fact, Miles' only speaking appearances are confined mainly to his own promoted events in the back room of a pub in Devizes, Wiltshire, or at Kerry Cassidy's UK get-together at Hotel in Watford, which also featured the aforementioned names, Birds of a Feather Flock Together. Oh, absolutely, don't they? Just... And then there are the hangers-on, those who support and defend Miles, much the same as the Sphere Being Alliance crowd do with Corey Good. An interesting aside, Corey Good divulged some very interesting information regarding Simon Parks, somebody known to me, but as it is unverified at this time, I won't be discussing here. There's a lot coming out in Simon Parks, and a lot of people looking into him, so much out there when you actually just dig under the surface. See, this is what I don't get. These hangers-on, they see what kind of a man Miles is, yet never raise the alarm, not even when he's publicly sexually molesting a woman in full view of at least three verified witnesses in a Manchester Wotherspoons establishment during the 2018 Awakening UFO event. I heard about this. That's called indecent assault, I believe. Absolutely. And I can't even get into some of the other stories I've been told, as that would probably violate online conduct codes. But there is more, and there are people willing to come out if only they weren't afraid of the inevitable backlash from aforementioned basis crew and supporters. Um, I can say without a doubt these people are the... You think you're dealing with vile people at the moment? These are even worse. Now, what I noticed... Um, Actually, I'll, I'll read the last bit of this and I can do a little summary. Um, and then there's also these people donating money to his cause. Apparently he was in attendance at the U recent UFO mega Megacon in Las Vegas and posted on Facebook begging people to send money to allow him to stay longer. Was this where he's tried to convince people in the UFO community that so-and-so is toxic? Or this person is dishonest, so don't talk to him, etc, etc. It's pathetic. It really is. Desperate, even. Is he that afraid of losing whatever relevance he had in the UK in UFO scene? Now, there are a few people, new people, doing better research and speaking to high-profile UFO researchers he has never interviewed. Makes you wonder. That re reminds me. I spoke with his former business colleague, Joanne Summerscale, interviewed in issue 6 of Shadows of Your Mind about many things off the record relating to the conduct and behaviour of Miles Johnson, which naturally can't be offered at this time. I do suggest, however, you read the interview and click on the respective link that relates to the breakup of Amash. It's enlightening to say the least, especially given the source material was Miles himself. I have my own uh, take on the Amash thing and before I read that one, I'm going to do my own one and uh, see if they compare, because I, I, I have my own view on this. I was right in the middle of the, the, those two, Joanne and Miles, and so I have both sides, really, and what it was like coming from my position. So I'll do my own take on that, and I have information on that, a lot of information on that. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. There is more, much more. But right now, I think I've said what I wanted to say, and I guess I'll wait the obligatory email he'll no doubt send to me in the early hours one morning alleging I'm a sick individual, not fit to be a magazine editor, spreading vicious rumours and slandering his character, orchestrating a campaign to discredit his, his work and therefore putting nails into the coffin of humanity, whatever that means. But these are all things he said to me before. Yeah, I've heard these over. He'll say, begone demon as well. He said that to quite a few people when... 
he just, he's a drunken, I think he's on drugs or something because he goes up and down, up and down and he's normal one minute and then you'll get these messages in the middle of the night and he'll start accusing you of things and most horrible stuff. I don't know how he even thinks of this stuff and just to cause grief to people in the middle of the night and then it'll go on for two or three days and it's it's madness. It's ma absolute ridiculous nonsense and if anyone is mentally ill, it's definitely Miles Johnson. Absolutely, there's something wrong with that man. It's, there's several things wrong with him, not just one thing. He's got a combination of illnesses, I, I reckon. Oh, putting nails in the coffin of humanity, whatever that means. But these are all things he said to me before. I guess when the truth hits too close to home, people go on the attack, lest anything else comes out which shows their true colours or flags their name with the relevant authorities, which isn't a wholly unbelievable scenario. The thing is, everything I've written here is truth, verifiable truth. I can back that up 100% and more, much more. I, he's, a, he's only touched the surface with this thing here, this article here. There's so much more. And that's what will bother him. As Axel Rose said that night in Paris, 1992, a man who uses you, uses the media, uses everybody just to fulfil his fucking parasitic needs, that could apply to more than a few in the ufology community on both sides of the pond. And I have demonstrated just one example, a snowflake in the tip of the iceberg. It's always the ones with something to hide who protest the loudest. Yeah, absolutely. And they never stop screaming this lot. A common trait in the ufology scene, unfortunately. There has to be more people out there willing to expose the frauds, the charlatans and the manipulative. It just takes a little courage. The sooner these people are wheedled out, the sooner we can get on with serious research and searching for the answers. Absolutely, that's exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. There's a virus in the UFO scene. The vipers of the US, on the US side have been well documented during the past couple of years. Now it's time for people to realise that the UK side has its fair share of vipers too. Hopefully this, this statement will encourage others to come forward with what they know. Thank you for reading Dave Partridge, ed editor of Shadows of Your Mind magazine. Uh, thank you so much Dave, that is absolutely fantastic and you, you've hit the nail on the head there and got it into a concise report but got the main points there that need to be looked at with this man. He's an absolute menace and anyone surrounding him and um, protecting him and sticking up for him and enabling Ben the Porter, Ben not the Porter. This is why I did the video on Ben the Porter, about his being an enabler. Look at my vids about that if anyone wants to know the backstory. Um, but yeah, thanks to Dave. It's, it's just shocking as well that, see, one thing with me is I'm interested in so many different things. I don't just look at UFO stuff. I'm interested in loads of things. I'm, I'm always looking at stuff. So I see quite a lot of communities and some of them are really, couldn't be far, further away from the UFO community. I mean, a um, friend Lady Sparkle mentioned um, Jeffrey Starr the other day. You don't want to get this person on your back. Well, she's absolutely right. I mean, the scene over there, they will rip anyone to shreds in five minutes. They have gone after major makeup companies. That guy is unbelievable. So you really do not want to mess with him. So I've noticed that's a makeup crowd and all this stuff. But you get the same trolls, the same nonsense. I look at black news, African news, Arab news, and even if you look at the comments and if you leave a comment and then you get attacked for something, you don't say the right thing, they're the same kind of mentality, the same sickness in every circle. I look at paedophile stuff as well, you know, the online paedophile hunters, I think are doing a fantastic job and they could do with a little help and guidance as well and doing things correctly because they're on the right track. They just need to, um, you know, uh, furnish it up a bit and tidy it up a bit and they're definitely doing an absolute amazing job bringing these people into the open. And I've noticed as well, they get the same kind of trolling, the same sickness, the same people attacking them. Um, you know, it's ridiculous. It's happening in every single circle, but it's exactly the same. The same sort of comments that will cut you, they, they think they can cut you to the bone, and they do cut you to the bone on a lot of occasions and destroy people. And then anyone who is a witness or has anything to say 
just can't be bothered. They just think, oh, can't be bothered with this hassle. But then that means these lunatics are running everything. If you, they just, people just, I can understand people walking away. I have done loads of, oh, I just can't be bothered to leave them to it, say what you like and walk away. But sometimes you, you do have an argument, you get your point across, but you don't always feel that way. And But it seems to be a constant battle with everything you want to say, anything you want to raise. And, you know, just open your mouth if you've got some information. They come on to you, they're like locusts, really and truly. And I can see vulnerable people really being shocked by this because this is not normal behaviour in the real world. It's not normal behaviour, you fuckers. It really is not normal behaviour. So um, in the, in real life that does not happen. It's just online. And But they go even further because now they're getting addresses of people and private information, putting their private information online for people to come and actually attack you, Shane Gibbs. This is not on. This really is not on, and should the police should start investigating this. Who do you think you are? Because someone you don't like, you're, you're saying you're going to print their addresses online and come and attack them, and all sorts of lunatics out there follow people like these, so you don't know who could come to your house or who could do what, go to your job, do anything. It's a sickness, it's a plague. And I think in every corner of society, we need to recognise what's going on and start speaking up and just putting the, the wall up for these people, get them out straight away, nip them in the bud, get them, have no, nothing to do with them, just block them. It, it's really getting out of hand and it's everywhere, everywhere. So there's no truth coming out anywhere, no truth anywhere. We need to um, put a stop to that. People need to be informed of what's really going on everywhere and it's, it's not be just fed shite constantly and the money they're making from giving out this shite is sickening absolutely when there's so many worthwhile causes that that money could be going to now i would urge people if you have money to throw away stop giving it to the likes of miles johnson to go on his jollies i saw that video dave was talking about when he was begging for money in los angeles or whatever he was in the conference and he was going on about the price of the breakfast and the lunch and the food so i need more money so i could stay a bit longer and get more information for you guys so much contact being made here i'm finding out loads of information that send me more money so i can stay and have my jolly that bit longer and he goes business class and first class. He does not travel economy. I'm telling you that now. I've been there. So um, if you have money to spend, please, there's so many worthwhile causes. Go down the road and give a homeless man a lunch, a bed for the night, money for a bed for the night, anything like that. You will get so much more benefit back in the end. You'll get more joy out of it and it will bring more joy. And, you know, or there's people around the world, Africa, everywhere, children need sponsoring for schools, everywhere. The world is in chaos. Now, instead of giving these charlatans your money, do something nice. That's going to help somebody. Not going to pay somebody to go on being a menace to society and get his kicks. Miles Johnson has not worked in 20 years. I was there when, in his house, when the solicitor called him and his father's land was sold and he just got an um, uh, inheritance of over £350,000. Next day, he's online begging for money for his gas bill. He can't afford his gas bill. And I saw a message from somebody who was on the doll. I'm sorry, Miles, I'm on benefits six. I, I don't get much money and they've stopped my benefits, but I can, I'm not going to eat tomorrow on Thursday and I'll give you five pounds. That made me sick. He's off in America. And this man went without food on benefits. He didn't even say thank you. He didn't even say, he never says thank you to anybody. And he has not worked in 20 years. He tried to con me out of £15,000 because I call, called him out on his bullshit. He came back and says, you owe me £15,000 for the interviews we did. £15,000 for that lunatic. Do me a favour. Right, a lot more is going to be coming out on these. And we, uh, we need to get rid of them once and for all. I'm going to get rid of them. I don't care if anyone helps me or not. It would be great if they do. It would be fantastic. But I'm determined to finish them off single-handedly. That's how determined I am. It doesn't, I don't mind. Um, but it'll be great to have help and I want people to see. I don't want people want to just take my word for it. You know, you need to look at the information and the, the evidence out there and what people are saying. Just because they've no 
uh, subs and they're you know only just come online for to say one statement it must have taken them a lot to come online with no subs just to make a video to try and say what they need to say and get somebody to listen and they get trolled by these lunatics and thrown off so you know it's bad really bad we need to stop this thank you everybody hope I didn't waffle on too long but um I'll do a proper video later I just wanted to get this out with about the article that Dave um, did you know I think it's brilliant and it needs to go out and I thought I'd read it people find it boring to read sometimes I mean I do sometimes if it goes on too long I sort of read, skim through it I read very quick but you know you do miss things but um so sometimes it's better to see it in a video and somebody read it to you really and uh, it's easier on the ear or I don't know <laughs> it's easier anyway I find you know I, I like these audio books for blind people I might buy a few of them <laughs> Good idea, live bed, and I do that with videos when I watch uh, some at night with some good discussion. But so many ads come on, they drive you nuts. So you can't do that very often. Anyway, thanks everybody again, and um, I'll I'm sure I'll do some more videos later on today and get up to date on things. But thank you everybody. Bye.